Hey, this is our maintenance side of the hangar. So this is where we pull most of what's called a phase inspection. In fact, our mechanic's down there working right now. Um, every 150 hours, basically, the aircraft have to come, not completely apart, but, but pulled down for uh, some major inspections. Um, it's routine maintenance for the most part. That's also an opportunity to fix, uh, you know, a, a squawk or two that might have been a okay to be flown, flown with, but really need to be fixed uh, for long term. So this is what goes on here. It's part of the continued airworthiness of the aircraft. It's something that uh, uh, we operate with the approval of FAA in uh, this fashion. Uh, these birds over here are all in phase or prepped for phase right now. Um, it's pretty normal for us to have birds over here being worked on pretty much all year long because we rotate the aircraft through and out. So it's a full-time operation? It's a full-time operation, yes. This particular Cobra that you're going to hear, uh, 826, is a Vietnam and a Desert Storm veteran. Um, we've got a couple of birds that are that served in both conflicts. Uh, this is one of them. This is also one of our show birds um, back when we were doing the demonstration team in 2007. Uh, this particular bird did get shot down in Vietnam um, and interestingly enough served in the same unit in the Vietnam and the Desert Storm. Most of the Cobras that served in Desert Storm would have flown out of Germany and that's what this one did. Um, and in quite some of them were tan. We do have 998 that's in the tan scheme but uh, quite a lot, of, a lot of them it happened so fast they were still green uh, when the conflict hit. One thing we didn't really talk about is this is the final version of the Army's Cobra. So this is the F, a fully modernized version. Would have been configured to fire um, tow missiles and the two and three quarter inch unguided missiles and the 20 millimeter cannon. Cobra 295, the reason we're working on this aircraft is this is the 50th Cobra ever manufactured. It did serve in Vietnam. It was shot down a couple of times over there. Um, what we're doing to honor the, the original Cobra is to go back and put the original curved style canopy on it, the, the G-nose turret and the uh, interior so it would be representative of what the birds looked like in Vietnam. Um, of course, like everything else, it takes time and money our biggest issues right now have been a little bit of both. Uh, getting the metal work redone is surprisingly uh, not as simple as you would think uh, to, to change the, the flat panels that the Army went with in the late 70s, early 80s, back to the rounded canopy early on. Their reason for doing that was the, the thinking was that the flat panels actually uh, put less glare out to somebody on the ground and made it a little bit harder for the aircraft to be seen. Um, the rounded canopy, the thinking was that the, you might get a glint, but it was just one spot. It wouldn't, wouldn't uh, glint quite as much as, it, as the flat panels would. Uh, the Marines don't agree with that. The Marines still fly a round canopy. It's a completely different rotor system and different uh, engine. It's actually two engines instead of one. Um, but that's the method that they use. Hopefully we'll have this bird back, in, back flying in the next oh, 18 months or so before the end of the 50th anniversary of the ending of uh, the Vietnam War. But uh, the intent is for this aircraft to be back flyable and be in our um, ride program at some point. So that we'll be able to give people the experience of what it looked like in the, when they first came to, came to the conflict back in 66, 67. So one of the crew chiefs of this bird in Vietnam brought us this red nose. In fact, we have it sitting over on a shelf over here. So once the aircraft is restored, that'll go back on it. So that we're trying to restore it as best we can. So this would have been uh, the, not really nose art, but the art that's up on the uh, cowling around the, uh, where the main rotor is up top. So this would have been the unit that this, that this particular bird, one of the units that this particular bird served in in Vietnam. So this is the targeting yoke for the uh, uh, gunner for the G the G model configuration for the Cobra. And then down below here is actual, the actual turret. We've got uh, one side's already got the 762 a gun in place, the other side will carry a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. 
Um, and that is, again, what they carried in Vietnam for the most part. You know, some local variations in there, but that generally, that was the general configuration. So the big difference between the original Cobra, the G model, um, and the fully modernized of the F model is the shape of the canopy. <clears throat> it's a much smoother, it's a much more rounded canopy in the original version. Uh, it's got some really different, uh, in addition to the canopy being different, the sighting system was really different. Uh, the later versions actually have a turret under the nose that the gunner who sits in the front seat can control right and left, up and down and whatnot to uh, <clears throat> sight in the tow missiles and whatnot. Uh, there's a similar system to drive the turret that's on uh, the original Cobra, except that uh, you don't have the you don't have the same level of sighting that you do in the later models, and it's got a different drive in the in the later model uh, Cobras. The turret's actually driven off of um, uh, some sensors that are hard mounted into the roof of the can roof of the canopy. They actually attach to the back of the pilot's helmet. Um, here they drove the drove it with some hand controls, and they had different things. The current turret, uh, the the latest version of the turret, has got a 20 millimeter three barrel gun, Gatling gun uh, arrangement, whereas in this original version it typically had uh, two ports, one of which had a 7.62 uh, six barrel uh, mini gun on one side and a 40 millimeter uh, grenade launcher on the other side. So the armament has definitely changed over the years. Um, original Cobras had a provision for the same three barrel 20 millimeter Gatling gun, but they typically were hard mounted on one of the wing stores, actually typically on the left hand side, uh, in, a, in a, a barrel of ammunition on the other side and it would feed actually through the, through the belly of the aircraft to <coughs> feed the rounds to the other side. All right, so this is arguably the most important piece of a Bell helicopter. This is what is called the Jesus nut. This is what goes on top of the, the rotor mast and what is what holds the main rotor system on the top of the helicopter. The joke has always been, you know, if this fails, you're about to go meet Jesus. People are always looking for those. If you go to our website, you can uh, find a Project 295 donation spot uh, that'll allow uh, folks to make a donation to the project to help get this one uh, across the finish line and back in the air. Hopefully we're going to get that done before the end of the 50th uh, anniversary of the ending of uh, Vietnam. Is that when you hope to have this first flight? That's, that's what we're hoping. Sooner than that if we can do it. <laughs> this is a definite Vietnam vet. It uh, deserves to be back in the air. What percentage would you say is complete? Oh, we're probably at the maybe 70% range. Okay. Uh, the nose is, is still the biggest um, biggest change that we're working on. We've got to get the, uh, we got some folks coming in pretty soon to finish up getting the, uh, the canopy kind of secured. It's basically just sitting in place with a couple of Calicos right now. Uh, to get it all squared up and in place and then we'll have to do some fitting on the the nose to put the old style nose back on and then it's a matter of getting the guts so we still have to uh get the the engine finished it's it's at a shop right now get the engine finished get the main blades finished um and then start start the long slog of going through all the hydraulic system and all the electrical system and and uh to get everything back up to, to airworthiness, uh, to airworthy status. It's all doable. It just takes, like everything else, time and money. <laughs> and where can people go donate again? They can go to armyav.org, which is our website, and look for Project 295, and you'll find it there. There's also a, a, we, a Huey that's being rebuilt out in uh, Mesa, Arizona, Project 315. That, one's, that one should be actually flying before this one is, probably. But this is the one that's the uh, major, major work on this one. So like everybody else, we uh, 2020 was not a good year for the air show industry, and that's where we, as a foundation, get most of our revenue. We were very fortunate, like a lot of companies, small businesses, that we were able to get the payroll protection, uh, the PPP uh, loans in place, so we were able to keep, keep our folks on board. Um, 
and the beginning of this year has turned has uh, has been much better. We we've been very fortunate that we've been contracted at least a couple of times to fly with the Navy Test Pilot School, uh, which was a new change for us, which has been very good for for us and good for them. It's been kind of neat to have the birds that have been flying for 50 years uh, helping train new students up there. It's been a real real welcome experience. And the first couple of shows of the season have been small in numbers but very good in participation with folks flying so that's been a real good indicator that we that we hope the rest of 2021 is gonna gonna play out looks like people are really ready to be out <laughs> the folks that are out are really ready to go do things so uh we've been we good trying to keep everybody safe and uh and all that but it uh it's definitely been quite the year i've, I've had a little bit of luck with the movie industry which has helped as well um we certainly aren't a one-trick pony and we have to keep learning new tricks to, to, to keep us keep us go, moving along. This is our foundation movie bird. Um, one of the nice things about being where we're located, where the main chapter is located in Hampton, is that we're real close to a lot of the movie filming that goes on in Georgia. Uh, we've appeared in quite a number of features and this is a, actually one of our volunteers uh, built this bird up and made it so that it looks accurate and looks good and can be put on a either as a prop at a sound stage and it has done that um, or as a like a green screen application where you can you know take the main rotor off and put it on one of the, the green uh, green screen areas that they can actuate uh, make it shake make it look like it's flying that sort of thing but the nice thing about that is it is allows us to uh, provide this to the movie industry um, we have appeared in a number of of shows over the years both movie and on tv this is, just gives you gives the movie folks an opportunity to, to use an aircraft that's not you know quite as risky <laughs> as, as the normal uh, but this was a flying bird it is no longer uh, it does look good but it's not uh, not a flyer and what um like movies and shows has this been in um generically we've been in walking dead we've been in stranger things we've been in last full measure uh We've been in Fifth Wave. We've been in a number of uh, TV and um, streaming uh, shows as well. We were in an episode for one of Dolly Parton's uh, Heartstrings. Uh, one of the neater, actually, one of the neater things we did um, a few years before I came here is that there was a live production of uh, Miss Saigon over in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. The, uh, no, here. Okay. Uh, and the, the guys, you know, there's a scene at the end of that of that play where they're, the folks are extracted by a helicopter and they did, I don't know, 16, I think, or 18 straight uh, events with a play where they came over right on time and, and you know, in because it, it was an outdoor theater. And they were able to incorporate that. Made the New York Times a whole nine yards. Pretty neat. Pretty good. Pretty neat deal. But, uh, that is one of the nice things we get to do um, with our foundation is we do get to play a little bit with the movie industry um, that's neat it's a it's a an additional thing that we get to do in addition to you know taking the aircraft over to veterans events and taking them to schools we do a lot of stem work um, and then taking them to air shows and and uh, showing them showing the general public uh, what these aircraft were capable of and, and in a lot of cases still are capable of you know, these these birds have been around for you know basically 60 years um, and, and this has still working. This has a service history with it. This one does. I'll have to. I'd have to look at the, the base history on it. What I know about it is it was one of our hulks that uh, uh, we have several volunteers that worked uh, at some of the local aviation folks, like Delta, for example, has been a real, real big help to us over the years. And one of our guys who was a Delta painter did this on his own. He, he we got it over to his house on a on the on the right kind of trailer and. He had it for several months, and he, on his own, went through and painted this whole rascal and uh, got it looking right. It's looking a little dusty now because that's actually movie dust. We just had it in a production um, just here in the last two months. So it's busy. It is absolutely busy. That's what I'm talking about. So this was a, this this was a bird that that when we got all of these aircraft out of drum, I say we when the foundation got all these aircraft out of drum, they picked 13 birds. Um, and these are in here, in here as spares. We do have, we have one on display up in um, uh, Dallas, Georgia, uh, at a museum up in this, uh, uh, on display up there. The rest of them are here, plus the one flyer in St. Louis and one flyer in uh, 
uh, Mesa. But some of the things they did to modify these aircraft for the show circuit, they pulled that inlet off. Uh, it cleans up the air intake a little bit, gives you a little, little bit more power. Um, and they took, for the most part, they took this uh, uh, ads boom off, which is uh, that boom that comes out to the side because the, uh, that's part of the targeting system. Um, and unfortunately, when you're doing a four ship type formation, it's right where the guy, <laughs> the guy in the back who's flying the aircraft needs to, you know, needs to see his wingman, you know, so just, they just took them off to clean it up. Is there, we've had people comment, you know, you, you see a picture of our, one of our birds out there and if you look, oh, that's an S model. And they're, no, they're all F models, but they've been modified from the, uh, from the original. And here's again, here's that line. So this is one of our birds that was one of our, uh, it's, our, it's our, one of our spares, but this is one of the ones that was in the show, show team. But you can see where that, that uh, inlet was removed back in the day. Well, this is our boneyard uh, where we've got old, some older and obviously unairworthy aircraft. Um, a lot of times this is, the, this is the beginnings of a rebuild. This might be the beginnings of a rebuild, for, particularly for static. Um, oddly enough, uh, here recently they've been, uh, some of these that you're looking at are actually movie stars. They'll be on the TV uh, series pretty soon. Uh, which is a, a neat addition for us. But a lot of times the, the boneyard is for where to find some of those hard to find, you know, panels, that sort of thing. Something that's uh, that you can uh, resurface and reuse at a later date. Most of the birds that we have back here um, came out of the guard, but they had an active service life before them uh, in various and sundry places. A lot of them would have been Vietnam. They're the right vintage. Most of these are uh, mid 60s to mid 70s so some of them would have served overseas in that time frame some of them would have been in Germany quite a, quite a lot would have been over there we probably would have had a few that stayed in the training world um, they've all been quite busy the Huey is one of those aircraft that's just been around in all over the world and is still in use today quite honestly can you give me some examples of where else they are being used um, well, sure. Right now, the Navy and the Marines still fly Hueys and Cobras. They're a four-bladed uh, main rotor system instead of a two-bladed system, and they're twin-engine instead of single. Um, there's Hueys that are still being used in training and in missile support in the Air Force, although they're uh, coming to the end of that career. In the next uh, 18 months or so, they're going out. Um, you still see them in fire service. You still see them in EMS and some... Uh, you know, police department work, although they are coming to the end of their lives. They've been around since, uh, oh gosh, 6, 59, 60 on the original versions. Most of the versions that we have are H models, so they're mid 60s to mid 70s. So the birds are getting, getting on up there in age. But we still do, obviously, we still fly them, and there's a, a few other museums that have them. They will still be flying for many more years, I'm sure. I'll, of course, the fleet's getting smaller. Um, you still see them in service doing things like logging. You still see them in service. Uh, like I said, firefighting is a pretty common common application for them. You still see them, uh, actually, in overseas, they're still in service a good bit, too, um, particularly in South America. Still some in Europe that you're, they're operating as well, although they are being replaced by more modern aircraft. I mean, the, from a time in service, it's hard to argue with Bell, though. I mean, like I said, they've been around since the late 50s. And really, this is the first turbine-powered helicopter that made it of, of any great note. There were a couple of others that were in the same time frame, but, uh, but the Huey is kind of the grandfather of all the turbine, turbine helicopters. The turboshaft engine that went in there, he's a 253, is, uh, gosh, it's a, it's a great, great engine. It's been around for a really long time and it really changed that engine really changed uh, the world of the helicopter that it's you know as as powerful or more powerful than the the radial engines that were in use in say the h34 at the same time frame half the weight and more power you know that really really made helicopters work so this is one of the neat stories in the foundation this gentleman right here john canes uh, otherwise known as motown 
actually served on 624, which is the bird that's in the picture there and the bird sitting in the hangar right here. He served on that helicopter in Vietnam as a door gunner. Um, real, real active member here for many years, unfortunately, was uh, made at home and was killed in a car wreck about uh, not quite two years ago now, which is a real shame, but uh, he was a real nice, nice guy and uh, real active and, and we loved him around here, that's for sure. He was a character, <laughs> like a lot of these guys. It was neat. But neat connection. You got you got somebody who flew on not just a Huey in Vietnam, but that Huey in Vietnam, you know. That's pretty neat.